Today I'll share with you the design of this little vector scope. It looks like a vintage CRT TV, but it uses a 3D printed galvo to project vector graphics using a laser on the screen. With the two inputs it can display graphics in XY mode and has even an extra trigger to control the beam. It is an educational fun project that can be easily 3D printed and rebuilt at home. This video has been sponsored and approved by Brilliant. So this project is the second installment of my homage on the magnificent CRT TV. My last video showed the predecessor of the CRT TVs which was just a mechanical spinning disc TV. If you didn't watch it yet, check it out. As mentioned there, the journey started before trying to build a fake CRT TV with a laser instead of an electron beam. Playing around with glowing PLA 3D print material, I realized it was very sensitive to UV light, which can be seen when yeah. comparing this violet laser to this red laser. The persistence of the laser dot let me draw on the material, which made it perfect for a projection screen just like the phosphorus material on CRT TVs. By the way, to not draw permanent lines on your retina, please use eye protection at all times. So in cathode ray tubes, the electron beams are deflected by electromagnetic coils. That only works because electrons have a negative charge. Since I'm using a photon ray without a charge, I would rather need a gravitational field. But that project is still ongoing. A simpler way is to use mirrors to deflect the ray in X and Y axes. Since I wanted it to be fast, I started to use speakers and glued the mirrors to the membrane connected in stereo amplifier and fed it with coordinates. We will do the laser thing here. Laser beep beep and then pew, pew, and then wee wee wee. How about that? Now we need some signal. The deflection was very minuscule and I tried to crank up the amplitude more and more, not realizing that I far exceeded the operation voltage of the amplifier. While I'm still thinking this method is viable, the wear and tear was quite high. This was more serious this time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Remembering my hobby servo 3D scanner from an older project, I just pulled it out and glued on a mirror. This way I was already able to steer the beam quite precisely, but way too slow. Uh, yeah. I don't even know if I do it right. Or we will do it with the steppers, which should be faster, I don't know. The next method I tried was making a galvanometer from stepper motors. These experiments were going on for a few live streams and the folks were enjoying every failure on this journey. I really don't want to like hit that one. I found it also hilarious. Oh no, we killed this motor. <laughs> I think, oh, oh, hot, 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 ah. Oh, sh Yeah, that's not good, I believe, when software engineers do engineering stuff. Who designed this? Yeah, that's, that was me, sorry. I tried different types, and there was always a trade-off between speed and precision. Let me do a horizontal micro-step. Now you can see the micro-steps, that's like, this is like some a complete step or something. The challenge was to find the fastest possible speed for the motors, where they wouldn't lose steps. Oh no, they're losing steps. That means that we can keep control of the angle of the mirrors. Let's slow it down. Once that sweet spot is found, the okay, mirrors need okay. to be positioned such that the first mirror will deflect a ray towards the second mirror, and that one towards the projection screen. Look at this! <laughs> it's a square! Okay, it's not a perfect square. Yeah! <laughs> Alright, it wasn't really square, but I tried using micro stepping, which allowed for a finer control. And sure enough, we can draw perfectly straight lines. Let's try higher speed. The precision is getting worse the faster we move. Micro stepping, but very fast. The results were looking promising for a fun DIY project at this point. So I could move on designing the mini CRT case. I used Blender again. Although it's not a proper cut software, I'm familiar with it and it works well for quick and dirty projects.
Of course it always requires a few iterations, but after a few hours I had a set of parts for a first working version. As always I'm sharing my design files in the description. As a controller I used the Arduino Nano for simplicity with the CNC shield and simple Polulu style motor drivers. I committed to using compact and precise yet cheap stepper motors from AliExpress. The only manual change I had to make is to change the connectors to fit the 0.1 inch pin pitch of the shield. The shield offers extra power pins for the power for the laser and several analog and digital pins for our controls. The laser module I'm using is from an off the shelf laser pointer with 405 nanometers wavelength. I pulled off the cap and pulled out the module. Then I soldered on two wires for the power bypassing the button with the negative lead and attaching the positive between those two passives here. Now we can drive it from the shield power. Since I want the device to have some basic controls, I decided to use a rotary encoder and a switch. The encoder has a rotary and a push action. We can use different knob types depending on the looks that we are aiming for. The switch has a nice vintage look and will be used as a soft power switch. For the Galvo we need some mirrors to deflect the laser. I had some thin acrylic mirrors laying around from a different project which I can cut in shape. To assemble the whole device I like to use 3mm bolts. Square counter nuts are quite useful to embed in the print. At some point I just got all the lengths of AliExpress to never have to care about this anymore. Since this should look like a proper oscilloscope for the XY analog inputs I used simple BNC screw terminals. No soldering needed and we can just fit them to the case. The assembly is quite straightforward. The motors are screwed on directly. The mirrors need to be cut in shape and glued with some double sided tape. They are just pressed on the shafts. I used some hot glue to attach the laser with some clearance to the mirror. And that's the Galvo part. To attach it to the base plate we just use some counter nuts in these slots and some bolts. Now we can attach the motors to the shield and place it on the pins. This lazy design secures it only with a dot of glue. Some more counter nuts and the base is done. Fitting the BNC connectors I realized they are far too close to each other to be used with some probes. Huh? So I made the change and reprinted it. This will work, so we can attach also the switch and the encoder. The screen is just placed on the frame and some glue holds it in place. I know it doesn't win a beauty contest, but it only needs to look nice for the video cover. I attach the front to the base and the quick test looks really promising. Currently the calibration needs some manual intervention, but I got the solution for that. <laughs> We can use the encoder, but we need to wire it first. If you are not into soldering, there are modules with pin headers available with those. Each rings protect the wires from shorting. I use some pin sockets as connectors to the shield, since I lost my crimping tool in my chaos here. Good enough. The analog connections are only screwed to the connectors. No clue if twisting the wires does anything, but it looks professional. We can attach the front again and perform a quick test. Looks really cool. We can also try to focus the laser a little. And the firmware also needs an update. The USB is hard to plug in, but we only need to do it until the firmware is done. A few moments later. First thing to try is obviously using it as an oscilloscope. Here the X position is scanning from left to right and the Y position is determined by the analog probe input. Since there is no instant movement by the mirror from the right to the left, the line is more bouncing back and forth. Right away we can see the probe picking up the 50Hz mains frequency, especially when I touch the tip of the probe. I connected my oscilloscope that has a built-in waveform generator and tried different frequencies. Although it showed some resonances from the kilohertz realm. Oh, that's millihertz now. Here, this is 
9 hertz. It only is able to trace in a single digit hertz range, like in this Lesage's pattern. pattern. With a slower camera shutter it even looks okay. Compared to my flip dot oscilloscope this actually might be the second worst oscilloscope in the world. Let's try the second probe input with an XY mode. Using an ESP32 with its two digital to analog converters, I started to do some vector graphics like in my former projects on that. For a text menu we need a font. Starting with the line segments of an A, I quickly discovered that there is a problem. We can't jump from the end of one line segment to the start of the next one because the mirrors are moving at a finite speed. So it actually would be practical to turn on and off the laser, but how do we trigger that externally? Proper oscilloscope usually have an additional connection on the back. Since I ran out of grey filament and don't want to mess around with the front design anymore, I decided to just drill a hole in the back at a spot with enough space to accommodate another BNC connector. I will add this to the design files later. All right. There is also the problem that we are currently driving the laser constantly from a 5V pin. To control it with the microcontroller, we could connect it to a digital pin, but that doesn't provide enough current for the laser. Pins are driven at 20mA max. A simple solution is to use an N-channel MOSFET that acts like a switch on the negative wire of the laser. We just connect the gate to the controlling pin, the source to the ground and a drain to the negative of the laser. Flat side. Source gate drain. Or something. Now we just connect it to the power again. Okay, so this is 5 volts. The gate to a free digital pin. And we can control the laser from the software. I made the switch a soft power switch that is just checked by the microcontroller and turns on and off the laser accordingly. Okay, now let's turn it off. Yes, all right. The solution with the MOSFET works. Now we can wire the BNC on the back and connect it to another input pin. Let's test how it looks like closed. I fit the counter nuts using some bolts and gluing them in place so they won't fall out later. Then closing the whole contraption. Let's test it. I implemented a little calibration using the encoder to position the center. Almost feels like an etch -a sketch Now we need the on off signal for the laser. I added these loops for the probes to the ESP32 to attach the probes easier. X, Y, and trigger, and ground. Nice. Okay, this is the ESP. Okay. And sure enough, after some fiddling in the code, it works. The first letter of our font. A okay, trigger here, there. Font is done now trying to optimize on livestream to get the fastest output with good readability. The speed limit and the persistence of the screen really makes it look like a vintage monitor. Look at the mirrors. The left one is doing the hard job. Enough coding for now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Select the last menu point, here we go. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna la la la, I'm the best coder in the town. Let me show you the current state. It really looks cute. Once turned on, it will start displaying the main menu. We can select the menu item, the calibration for example, where we can position and calibrate the screen. The speed setting changes the speed of the galvo movement with visible quality drawbacks on faster speeds. <laughs> then we have Vim. The only way to leave that is by turning it off and on again. Then we have the rig and of course the XY mode fed from the probes connected externally. I like the design of it the most and the fact that it actually works even though it's mostly 3D printed. With the help of ChatGPT I wrote a little drawing tool that sends line segments as vector data to the ESP. That's cool. If you are not familiar with code and vector graphics, a good place to playfully learn and practice that is with today's sponsor Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming and AI.
Their approach is building an understanding from ground up with tons of hands-on lessons. This kind of problem solving and playing with the concepts is proven to be six times as effective as watching lectures. I myself always struggled concentrating on lectures in school and college, but whenever there is a problem to solve, I get in the flow. So it's even better if you can learn new concepts that way. I can only recommend the courses Thinking in Code for a good programming foundation and the course Vectors to get into vector graphics like I used in this and many other of my projects. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash bitlooney or scan the QR code on screen. Or you can click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Don't miss out on that opportunity for you and your family. So what's the next steps with this project? I already ordered an off-the-shelf Galvo to try another version. What do you think should we try with it next? Tell me in the comments. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this project and big thanks to all my supporters. Your contribution really helps. See you next time. Bye.